everybody and welcome back to the channel. I hope you're all well. So this is part two of our colour along in Tailton Witch's Cottage using Black Widow pencils and we're just going to get right in. So I've made a few decisions. Her hair is going to be black with purple tips. The background is going to be dark here going into a pink so that we get contrast with the hair and I think her dress is also going to be black um, so that's kind of the decisions I've made we probably won't get it all done today and I'm probably going to do this background in watercolour um, so let's get going and I'll probably show you a little bit and then go off camera and finish it and then come back and do a bit more so I think what I'm going to do is so I've got three colours out I've got flat black Oh, where's the thingy bob? There it is. Flat black, which is from the Cobra set. I have got Black Widow, which is clearly from the Black Widow set. And I've got, God, I'm struggling to find the thing today, Grape, which is also from the Cobra set. And what I'm going to do first of all is put a, a very light layer of flat black down all over the hair. And then I will go over that um, afterwards. So what I've got to be a little bit careful of is um, these beads. And I haven't quite decided what I'm going to do with these beads yet. Whether they're going to be a sparkly metallic colour or whether they're going to be um, a uh, pearl pearl. Or what? I haven't quite decided. I guess it depends what colour skin tone I go for as well. Um, again, I haven't decided on that yet. It's probably going to be pale, I would have thought. Um, but I'm not very good with skin tones. So it's probably going to be a light layer of probably ice cream or something like that. And then build it up with some shading from there. Um, so yeah, I found this page really difficult to make decisions on for some reason and I don't know why I think it's probably so I put in a light layer there I think it's probably um because I've gone in and I've done green and pink already and I've done blue and pink with the potions and I want to make sure that all the elements come together I suppose um so yeah, I, I don't know why, I just found it really difficult to make decisions on. Um, and, that, that's been, and that's been in contrast with what I did yesterday. Um, I was going through and I wanted, because I've done quite a few uh, colourings over the last few days. Um, I've finished, what have I done? I did something in uh, Enchanted Forest by Johanna Brassford. One, it was a picture I'd been wanting to do for absolutely ages. And if you follow me on Instagram, you'll see which one it is. Um, then um, I did then I picked out something from Hannah Lynn and it was really funny so I was just going through them I hadn't flicked through the whole book and um, I was like oh yes and I could just instantly see all of the colours and exactly how I wanted it to look and it turned out pretty much like that um, but I was just like oh my goodness and yeah so it all went down really really quickly and it's quite a limited palette actually it was like browns blues yellows and greens so it was quite simple again if you follow me on instagram you'll be able to see that one and i and i cracked out a few was that hair yeah i cracked out a few different mediums which i don't normally use um like um my liquid pearl and i got i got my stickers i don't get my stickers out all the time um, so I'm just going to do this side, I think, of the hair, and then I'll do the, I'll, you know, kind of finish it off. And then, um, or I'll show you kind of one section of doing the per the black with the blue tips. I haven't left any highlights. Um, I might put them in with Posca pen or something afterwards. I don't know yet. Or I might go crazy and get out some purple pen to put some highlights in i don't know all i know is that i think this page is going to be quite sparkly um i might well yet still go for i think i may, may have made a mistake by putting full-on black tip um 
I still might go for a black background yet. I have, I just, I'm struggling. <laughs> if anyone's got any suggestions or comments, let me know. Um, I'm sure, I mean, I'll get through it. I normally do. I normally make those decisions. They do normally come to me, but I seem to be struggling with this one. Um, but I think I definitely want to use watercolour. Um, that's for sure. Whether it, when it's black, I don't tend to use near colour too. Mind you, that might be a good, might be a good option. Um, so yeah, lots of decisions still to make, and then we've of course got all of these jars at the bottom, which I might just stick to like per pink and purple, uh, pink, pink, blue, and purples, which I've already started with. Although there's one down here, this one, which looks like a map. Um, so that could be wood. I don't know. We shall see. Like I say, lots of decisions. And I think it's probably because this page is quite busy as well. It's more one of probably the busier pages I've done as a colour along with um, than I've done probably previously. Right, so that's all of that kind of down on that side. Now I'm going to go in and put the purple because for me that's kind of the most important element for me of this so I'm pressing quite hard to go back over that flat black sorry that was flat black that I did that thin layer with because I want this to be quite uh, vibrant at the ends and I might even get a lighter purple just to kind of I don't know blend it out we'll see um but I do love this color in the Black Widow set the grape it's just really beautiful. I'm thinking, I don't know if anyone uses the Black Widows. If you do, let me know. I'm thinking of buying the Brute Funa Squares. Um, I saw a uh, Zucchini Kitty doing, I think it was something in Tales from the Forest Kingdom. It's a picture, it's an image I'd already done. Um, and she was using Brute Funa Squares and they look really nice. Um, so I'm tempted, not that I need any more pencils, that's the thing. It's like I love my Black Widows, I love my Arteza Expert and I love my Polychromas. It's like, why... Why would I buy anything more? Um, but they ju they're so good, so well priced, and the cut they've got. I think they've probably got some unique colours, even from the Black Widows. I just don't know really, because then I mean they're what I think Black Widows and Arteza Expert are wax based, and Polychromos are oil based. So I think it's probably like a feeling for me of balancing up, because I've you know I've got two wax and one oil. Um, so maybe it's a feeling for me of kind of balancing them up and thinking oh, that would be that would be nice and enhance my collection. I have got the Brute Funa Macarons and I absolutely love them. They work really well with Polychromas. They really work really nicely with my Black Widows. Um, so I'm probably thinking they'd work really nice with the, the squares as well. So if anyone's got both the Black Widows and the... Um, the Brute Funa Squares, let me know. Can you let me know what they're like? Are they similar? Is it worth me investing in them? I know that the, the, the thing, so that's all the purple on the tips. I guess the thing for me is, is you can't get them open stock. So with the Polychromos, you can. And with the um, Arteza Expert, you can. You can get them in packs of three rather than singles, but that's better than nothing. Um, with the Black Widows, you you can apparently if you email Albert, um, but I've not done that or needed to do that yet. Um, so yeah, so I'm pressing quite hard now to get the black that I want, but I might need not need necessarily need to do that. Right. So what I would really like, there we go. And so I'm blending that per black into the purple now. And I might well go back in with the purple and just make that a bit more vibrant. Um, yeah, so I mean, the brute prunes, I don't think you can get 
open stock so you'd have to if you know if you were low on a color you'd have to buy a whole new set i mean that that's the thing they're not they're not very expensive they're like 21 pounds for a full set of 120 on amazon which i don't think is too bad for a pack of 120 pencils um so yeah I'm, I'm contemplating it but it's just like the thing is i'd need to buy a pencil case and that's another 20 quid and oh it's just like oh really um i am looking out for them second hand so if anyone is thinking of selling them let me know um so yeah contemplating i've got some things on my wish list at the moment um i want to i want to um i've got a 36 pack of uh um albert drawer faber castell and they're just divine just divine and they're the same colors as polychromos um and there's some like there's some colors in the polychromos that i absolutely love um so i'm thinking of topping up my set with i think another 20 which would then take me up to around 56 which and they're the ones that i use the most um so i'm thinking of like topping them up um and i really i really do like them and you could use them wet or dry i tell the expert gosh sorry I don't, sorry if you can hear that the total expert on albert drew pencils as far as i'm concerned is shell from shell's coloring journey she is just amazing with them the results that she gets out of the pencils are incredible um and she's just as far as i'm concerned she's a genius with them um and she, she's the one that has kind of inspired me to get them i had the the derwin ink tents but i i i struggle with them i think i think i prefer near color two to derwin ink tents um i think that's probably because the neo color twos you can still wet them and still move them around uh, and you can re-wet them and move them around whereas when the Derwin ink tents have dried it's ink so you can't move it around once it's down um, so that's I think why I prefer the Neo Colour 2s um, and I've built my set up with that as well I started off with a set of 15 and um, I've got about, I think about 47 now or something like that, which I think they're probably the colours I use, will use the most. Um, I have got some more, I, I do would love to get the full set of, I think it's, I think it's 84, 86, I don't know. Um, but again, I'll build my set up slowly and I normally get them from Colt pens. Um, I can't remember how much they are per, per single, single piece. Um. So, yeah, I've got, I think, I, you know, I think I'm hesitant with the Brute Funas because I've got, I've got pencils that I love and I, I you know, and, I, and I've worked out, worked out which books I like them in, um, how they work in each book. You know, I love, I love these Black Widows in Hannah Carzon. They just are amazing. And I actually discovered through uh, Lucy Just Adds Colour, that they work brilliantly in Eerie books. Um, I was struggling with Eerie to find a pencil that I liked to use in there, and I discovered that the Black Widows are a joy. Right, so I'm going to go back over with the grape. I don't think I've got a dart. I think there's an aubergine. Just got to find it. Eggplant, that's what it's called, but I don't think it's darker than this. Just gonna have a look. And they're pretty similar, to be fair. I'm gonna just continue with the grape and just do another layer, I think. And then I'll do the other side off camera. And then I'll come back. So yeah, I'd love to know what your favourite pencils are that you like to use and if you've had any kind of discoveries about um, what pencils you prefer in what books and things like that. I know it's so, so much of it is personal preference. Um, so I'm taking this purple up into the black to really blend it in. I know a lot of it is so much about personal preference. 
um, and, and actually a lot of it is practice um, you know I, I and I've you know I've really worked and watched um, and I've still got I'm not saying I'm brilliant by any means um, I've still got a lot to learn um, but I'm only doing that through watching other people like Lucy just as color colors color along on the Erie was amazing and I learned so much from watching her um, so yeah you know it's just it's all about layering with these pencils sometimes to get these quite dramatic vibrant results which I and I think I just wasn't being patient enough in terms of the layering um, so yeah it's interesting really yeah it's just oh, it's just so I just love it just love it so sometimes though it's like I'm so tired that I just can't colour I just I just can't sit down mentally make the decisions about what colour I'm going to use, what medium I'm going to use, da 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 da. Um, so yeah, I don't know if you you can actually see the purple on camera. I can. It looks pretty amazing. And I might just go over that black again, probably with the flat black that I used earlier. Right, where's the flat black? What's that one? That's the flat black. Yeah, I'm just going to go over that flat black again just to blend it all together. Take out some of these white patches of the paper that are still there. I may put in some highlights a bit later with some Posca. Um, It's quite dramatic now with black hair. I could go like full on crazy and give her purple skin. If I'm feeling that bonkers. Right, so that's that side of the hair. I'm just gonna zoom you out so you can see if you can, you see it? Yeah, so that's that side of the hair. I'm now gonna do the other side and then I'll come back, okay? Hello, I'm back. Right, I've finished the hair. It has lost a bit of definition. Um, so I'm probably going to put that, some of that back in with some uh, Pentel Dual Hybrid. But for now, I'm going to do this background. Um, I've got two quite small paintbrushes. Uh, a one and a two zero. But they're very, very small. And I have Mauve, um, Purple Lake and permanent rose and they are kind of purples actually let's get my pipettes just activate them and I'm using Windsor and Newton Cotman colours and I'm just getting a pipette to kind of activate the, the watercolour and I'm probably I'm going to mix them on the palette um, so I've got I just got them out there and I'm going to mix them on the palette and I just had a massive spillage in the village. Um, luckily, I don't think I have ruined any books, thank God. Because that would have been tremendously, tremendously upsetting. If I'd have ruined some like that. Yeah, I think these colours are going to work really well. And what I'm going to hope to do is be lighter around the lady, so though she's got a glow. These are quite bright colours, but hopefully it will work. Okay, so I'll just show you those. Okay. Uh, right, I'm just gonna get to town. Um, yeah, so darker. Right, so darker at the bottom than what I wanted. So it's a bit watery at the moment. Yeah, so um, 
had a bit of a spillage in the village, but I managed to clean it all up with a lot of kitchen mole's help. Hannah Carlson's books. Oh, not zoomed in enough. Just move that up a bit so you can see what I'm doing. Hannah Carlson's books stand up really, really well to watercolour. Um, and maybe I should have put a sheet underneath, but I'm pretty messy colourist to be honest. Um, I just go for it. Which is probably not the best way to be. But that is what I do. So I don't want to cry as water as that. I'm going to leave it a little bit lighter around her. Maybe not quite go right up to the line to the line art. Um, if I want the colour a bit more dark, yeah, that's better. A bit more intense, and I just add a little bit more paint rather than water. I'm asked to do the same on the other side, so I can kind of try and keep it a little bit even. I don't know what, quite what I'm doing with the border yet. Um, we'll see what happens with that. Okay, so that's that one, and then we'll add the next one on. These are very similar colours, to be honest, but I could always add a dark one if it's not quite doing what I want it to do. And then I'll probably add the next um, colour up above her head. I don't want to get right into the, to the hair. I do want to leave a little bit around her, like I said, a little glow. So she's kind of got like a little halo. Yeah, bottom colour needs a little bit more intensity. quite like how this is looking at the minute. Well, I've just got to be careful. I'll move that round a bit. Move this in front of me and then you can see a bit better. I'm going to zoom you out a bit. You can see how it's coming. And I think what I want to do, just make that colour on the bottom a little bit darker. Take it directly off the pan. If I get it over the border, it doesn't matter. That's better. That needs to just dry a little. That needs to be a bit darker too. Should probably just turn the book around a little bit. That's a bit better. And then I'm just going to put the top in. Might just keep that colour going a little bit longer. And the same the other side. terribly accurate with what I'm doing. Right, then we're going to get this really, really beautiful bright pink and that's going to go on the top. Oh. I haven't quite decided what I'm doing with the border. I'd imagine it's going to be sparkly, but we'll see. And then probably once this is dry, 
oops, I'll go back in and just um, work on the intensity of the colour a little bit. Work out if there's, you know, I want to put an, it to change a little bit in places. I didn't need this extra small brush in the end. Let's turn it out. Pretty well. Let's do a good mixy mix there. Some water. That's it. Let's blend it together. I'll mix that a bit more there too. There we go. Oh, I'm loving the way this is turning out. There we go. And then maybe a little fraction closer to her hair. I could put a little bit of sparkle on the end then, you see. I don't know if it looks a bit weird or not. I'll see what it looks like when it's dry and if it needs to go right into the midge then I might do it but I might put then some I don't know, some white, white chalk or something around it, just to really make it look like a halo effect. So, that is the background as I'm doing it at the minute. So, that's it for now, folks. Um, we'll come back and we'll probably do her outfit next. Okay, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.